welcome, 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 Daybreak Legends to our March 2021 20, meeting. I'm Matt Olin, co-founder of Charlotte is Creative, and one of your hosts here at Creative Morning Charlotte. And thank you, Harvey Cummings, for being our morning maestro and treating us to songs by amazing female artists in honor of Women's History Month, which began this week. So please tip Harvey to show your thanks and admiration. We love, love kicking off these mornings with him. <clears throat> Folks, it is awesome to be with you, with you this morning. It really, really is. And a very special shout out to those of you who are joining either here in the Zoom room or on YouTube Live from around the country and across the globe. We're so glad you're with us. Now, for those of you who are joining us on Zoom, just a few quick reminders before we dive in here. First and foremost, choose speaker view not gallery view, choose speaker view. You should see that option on the top right corner of your screen. This is gonna allow you to best see the person who's speaking or performing at any given time. And secondly, everyone is muted by default to keep the audio as clear as possible. So please do keep yourself muted during the program. Now that said, feel free to turn your camera on by clicking start video. If you wanna show us your beautiful faces, we would love, love, love to see you. And you can interact with us and show your love for this morning's performers and speakers by using the chat feature or the reaction icons, which are both found at the bottom of your screen. So get in there, make some new friends, go on, get your chat on. We wanna see you in there. Now, our global theme this month is Ripple. <clears throat> and if you've been paying attention lately, you probably know there's a lot, of, a lot of uncertainty rippling through our creative community these days regarding the future of arts funding, what it might look like here in Charlotte. There's a lot of exploring and questioning and envisioning and emotions and big thinking and fear of change, all of it, it's all there. Um, and there's a lot of work to be done, and, and this is all going to be figured out. And amidst the ripples of change, we also see opportunity, right, in this moment, an opportunity to intentionally create something innovative and collaborative that honors and supports and deeply, deeply values our growing creative community and leverages what our community has done well for so many years and also learns from our past missteps and shortcomings to get even more things right. So clearly there's, there's a lot to consider and lots to do. But this morning, I'd like to offer up one thing of certainty. I am certain that we must keep coming together, championing each other, celebrating each other, lifting each other up. That's what we've been doing here at Creative Mornings for the past 65 months. This is our 65th consecutive monthly event, which is a little crazy. And, and there are opportunities throughout each month to come together too, even outside of Creative Mornings. So much, so many opportunities for creative collaboration in Charlotte. And we will continue to stand by this one certainty that we are stronger together, right? We're stronger when we dream together and collaborate together and when we hail each other's wins and when we pull each, each other up, you know, when we, when we inevitably stumble and fall. So with that, I wanna say thank you for coming together yet again this morning with us. It is more important than perhaps any of us truly, truly realize. And we have a lot to pack in in the next hour, including more live music and some hug micro grants and a bolt of inspiration and some creative speed dating in the form of 30 second pitches, plus a talk from one of Charlotte's most acclaimed comedians and podcasters, Tara Brown. But first, first, we have a manifesto here at Creative Mornings. It is our North Star. It keeps us grounded and focused and, and just remembering why we gather together each month. And so this morning, I'd like to invite Kerma Moraine to read our manifesto aloud for all of us to hear. She is a poet and a blogger and an author and an educator and a recent recipient of a Hug Micro Grant that helped her publish her latest book of stories and poems entitled Café, Amor y el Sueño Americano, Coffee, Love, and the American Dream. Kerma, good morning. How are you doing? Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad to be here and I'm so thankful for my hug, my hug grant. That was awesome. So I am able to publish my book that you announced so beautifully, Café Amor y el Sueño Americano. It's in Spanish, but I'm working on the English version right now. Oh, well, that's so beautiful. We're so excited and we're, we're so glad you're with us this morning. Would you do us the honor of reading our manifesto aloud for us? Of course. Everyone is creative. A creative life requires bravery and action, honesty and hard work. We are here to support you, celebrate with you, and encourage you to do the things you love. We believe in the power of community. We believe in giving a damn. We believe in face-to-face -face connections. 
in learning from others, in hugs and high fives. We bring people together who are driven by passion and purpose, confident that they will inspire one another and inspire change in neighborhoods and cities around the world. Everyone is welcome. Now in Spanish, right? Yes, please. Para todos mis amigos, aquí estamos. Todos somos creativos. Una vida creativa requiere valentía y acción, honestidad y trabajo duro. Estamos aquí para apoyarte, celebrar contigo y animarte a hacer las cosas que amas. Creemos en el poder de la comunidad. Creemos en involucrarnos. Creemos en las conexiones cara a cara en aprender de los demás, en abrazar y chocar los cinco. Conectamos a personas que se mueven por pasión y propósito, seguras de que se inspirarán unas a otras e inspirarán el cambio en comunidades y ciudades alrededor del mundo. Todos son bienvenidos. Oh, thank you so much, Karma Moraine. I'm good. Like we have so much more planned, but like even if we ended right there, I'm good for the morning. Awesome. That was beautiful. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you much. so much. And please follow Kerma on Instagram at, at Kerma Moraine. And uh, she's just doing amazing things out there. So, okay. Tim Miner, my co-founder at Charlotte's Creative and our monthly creative correspondent out there in the field again. Where are you this morning, Mr. Miner? Good morning, creative mornings. All right. I have a, had a few cups of coffee this morning from pure intentions, of course. Uh, so a couple of months ago, when we when I was out at the Charlotte Art League and we were doing speed dating, we ran a video from our good friend and hug recipient, Bay Hart, about her new studio, the Bay Hive. And somehow the sound didn't work. So to make up for that, I am in, uh, I'm out here in Mount Holly today at her beautiful new photography studio that's inside of a 113 year old train station. Um, she uses this as studio space, classroom space for the students that she works with. And the Bay Hive is not just any photography studio. It is devoted to equity and inclusion. So her work features children of color who wanna see themselves depicted in, in photographs, but also in marketing so that when people that are marketing products or they have um, different services that really they have representative photography that they use and beautifully created and created with intention. So excited to be out here. You can see some of her pictures on the wall behind me and I'm gonna be hanging out with Bay this morning. Well, we love Bay. Her, her work is so beautiful and we've collaborated with her and just, I, I love the fact that you're out there in her studios. She's, I mean, she's so busy. She's like running around. So you may see her back behind me, but she's got things to do this morning. She's too busy for us. She's too busy for us. <laughs> Look, Tim, before we go any further, we do have some incredibly generous sponsors to thank now, right? And uh, we, because we, we wouldn't be here without their, their support. We do have to thank them. Right. Yes. <laughs> well, so as you heard, in honor of Women's History Month, Harvey Cummings regaled us with covers from amazing female artists this morning. So maybe, uh -huh. maybe we should follow suit and take on a tune from a female artist who's been making her own history lately. I don't know. Maybe we should. Or maybe we shouldn't. I don't well, know. I don't know. I, I just know this is a long time coming. I've been trying to get you to do something that's hip hop adjacent at least for a long time. So okay. let's do this thing. So, so here's, here's the thing. Our co-co MC, Michelle Gabadia, is of course here with us again this morning. And I think right after this thing plays, uh, we <sighs> she should cut directly to her so she can render her verdict on our performance. That seems only fair, right? I just want to say that I didn't sign off on that idea, but I will, <laughs> I will accept whatever comeuppance Michelle de, uh, dispenses after this is over. All right, Steve, let's thank our, our sponsors in song form, shall we? Turn my Zoom on, grab some Joe. Timmy, how you feeling? Feeling glad as hell. Zoom on, grab some Joe. Timmy, how you feeling? Feeling glad as hell. Ooh, man, love a piece of partners. Screaming star room like some crazy kindergartners. Oh, yeah, love those nerds at school. Come Zoom here, Zoom there, handle the unmuting. Come now, let's thank full eyes. Culinary school, thank me a pie. Pure intentions, beans, and a coffee high. Effie is all, let me amplify. Maddie, how you 
thing. God is hell, Yo, Harvey's playing the keys. Gotta take a deep breath. Bonus written for me. Thinking base camp and hey, big low blues. And Skillshare MailChimp for thanking you too. Create and change your life. Show it's gotta all come see the light. Everyone is welcome, y'all know it's right. Giving all the dams no end inside. We couldn't love them anymore. Our sponsors open their cash drawer. I turn my Zoom on, grab the joke. Timmy, how you feel? Feeling glad as hell. Zoom on, grab the joke. Timmy, how you feel? Feeling glad as hell. There are just so many words. There are just so many <laughs> words to, to, to choose from in the American language to uh, fully encapsulate what just transpired there. I can only communicate my feelings. So that is time that I will never get back. Uh, <laughs> there were some pitch problems, concerns, if you will. Um, creativity was on fleek. The creativity was there, so I will give you that. But um, no, no. Let's well, 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 well I, I have to say, though, that, Tim, you and I should have talked ahead of time, because I just assumed we were going to try to go for the falsetto uh, in the glad as hell part, and you didn't. So now uh, I wish I hadn't. Oh. Listen, for it took 47 years, but puberty finally hit, and I cannot hit those notes anymore. So yeah. it, if you thought this was bad, Charlotte Star Room saw a lot of takes of me trying to hit those notes that just really would have been more, more like a hate crime. I feel bad, though. I really well, feel bad. We appreciate y'all, though. And, and more than that, we appreciate the <laughs> level of love and time that you put in to really taking time to honor our sponsors and the song did that. So you get E for effort, a hundred percent. And again, we want to thank our local sponsors one more time, just in case you were like this and you didn't hear who our sponsors were. So Charlotte Star Room, WFAE, Skookum, Four Eyes Web Design, Pure Intentions Coffee, uh, Community Culinary School of Charlotte, uh, Buengo Graphics and Charlotte is Creative. Those are our local uh, sponsors round of applause for them for really keeping us here and creative and just feeling great about being creative in the Charlotte community. And of course, we wanna thank specifically our three global sponsors. They actually support all 223 chapters around the world. So we wanna shout out MailChimp, marketing strategies to help your small business grow. Change is one of the only constants in life, but it's often fast and unpredictable. MailChimp created to report to help small businesses overcome uncertainty and find success. The results is a report full of insights, strategies, inspiration, and help to bring your ideas to life. We also want to shout out, hey, my base camp, the Creative Mornings uh, headquarters team in Brooklyn recently launched a campaign called, hey, Creative Mornings. Think of it as like our virtual global water cooler. So far, they've collected insights about your favorite books and even made a bookshop full of them and also uh, tapped into the hot tips for writing powerful small signatures powered by, hey, a new email client from our friends at Basecamp. And lastly, Skillshare uh, Premium. There is a 40% off uh, offer right now with Skillshare Premium. Our friends at Skillshare are excited to help you create something meaningful with access to thousands of inspiring classes through an exclusive limited time offer of 40% off any annual premium membership. You can go to their website and get 40% off. It's only valid for new members through the 31st of this month and cannot be combined with any other offer. Uh, I believe the URL is skl.sh forward slash cm40. So go ahead and get that on. But thank you to all of our sponsors, both local and Global. Yay! Maybe we'll try another song next time. We'll see. Shout out to Lizzo. Now, so was the official analysis, bless your heart? Is no, that basically what it is? It, you know what? I think bless your heart actually might be too good for <laughs> time down. Okay. I think, I'm going to go was, back on mute. I'm going to go with an Ariana Grande reference. Thank you. Next. Next. <laughs>
So Ouch, we're in the, Matt, now we're in a category with Pete Davidson. Fantastic. <laughs> You're good. Good company. Good company. He's quite the creative person. Anyway, it's time, friends, for a little musical interlude early this morning um, from our Charlotte Star Room music stage. Have you ever heard strings that just get each other? Have you ever heard strings play and it's like magic in your ears? And then you wonder who is making this music? And then you realize the people making the music actually like each other and are in love and are married and they're both exemplary artists in their own right and they've come together to make music that makes you feel and hear and see music. Well, you are in a treat then because look no further, Mark and Maggie O'Connor are here to bless us with their stylings, their skills. These are two critically acclaimed musicians. I'm really psyched to hear them. I played string bass in high school. So all my childhood is coming back to me. So I cannot wait to hear the sounds, the octave, and just the marrying of music from this amazing musically inclined couple. By all means, everyone give a rousing applause to Mark and Maggie O'Connor who are about to bless our ears. All right. Hello. Hello, Everybody everyone. Hears, okay. Give us a thumbs Thanks, up. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Matt. Great. Awesome. Thanks, Tim and everybody for having us. Fantastic. Well, it's great to be here. And uh, we, are, we are coming to you from right here in Charlotte. Uh, we live just a little west of town um, near Lake Wiley. And this is our home. And this is where we broadcast our weekly shows Mondays with Mark and Maggie O'Connor. Yes, you are in our living room right now. Yeah. You are basically on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so um, we're going to do two songs for you this morning. And the first one's going to be two violins. We're going to do the, the old Cajun classic from Louisiana. Uh, this was the very first song I ever saw performed on the fiddle when I was just a little kid on, on television uh, by Doug Kershaw the Ragin' Cajun, as he is often referred to. And so this is our version of Jolie Blonde. Jolie Blonde. I hope you enjoy. We, we actually have a string camp that we've run in Charlotte uh, the past few years, and we miss doing it in person, but we've gone virtual. This we year. We went virtual last summer because of the pandemic, and so um, even though we're almost towards, towards that uh, 
safe point. We're not quite there yet. We're so excited to get the vaccine when, when it's our turn. Yeah. Uh, but so we're going virtual again. Uh, and you can find out about it at O'ConnorMethodStringCamp.com. And uh, the, the song we just played is actually in Mark's book series. So if you want to learn how to play violin from the very beginning all the way to the advanced levels, Mark yeah. wrote a whole book series um, that, that we do our camps off of as well. <laughs> so Jolie Blonde is actually in book four. So it's, yeah. it's a little more advanced. Uh, we wouldn't start you off with <laughs> Jolie Blonde. Uh, we would just boil them cabbage down first. Yeah, we do our weekly series. We're, uh, we're going to do our 37th show in a row this Monday. Yes. Um, and uh, we started um, about a few months into the pandemic. It took us a couple of months just to get our equipment together and to figure this out. But it's really been nice to be able to perform for people through these times. And uh, this is one of the songs that uh, came out of this time. Um, I was missing my daughter a lot. Um, she's a little 10 year old uh, down in South Carolina and we don't get to see her as much through the pandemic er uh, period as we would like to. And uh, her name's Autumn, Autumn O'Connor. And this is, uh, this is uh, uh, an original song for her that I wrote about one sun ray at a time. Maggie's gonna sing it.
Wow. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I am totally in awe. Mark and Maggie, you two are just such a beautiful duo. Your music's amazing. You're getting up in the morning to do this with us. Thank you so much. We, we so enjoyed it. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Thank oh. you. Yeah, y'all played for us a couple years ago at Johnson C. Smith University. You kind of blew everyone away. And <clears throat> of course, we've been big fans for a while. And even before we met, you know, so many of the music, so much of the music that I loved, Mark and Maggie were on it in some way. You know, in fact, I have this, this song that I love so much, which is a cover of The Valley Road by Bruce Hornsby that was done by the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. And we were talking about it one day. Mark's like, oh, yeah, I, I played on that. I'm like, of course he did. Of course he did. <laughs> um, and it's funny, the other day I was watching Colbert, uh, Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Oh, yeah. And there was a bit of a mention. I think we may have a clip pulled up, possibly. Steve, can we play that? Nice. <laughs> That's not even mentioning the devil went down to Georgia. And I'm sure you're saying, sure, Stephen, the devil went down to Georgia, but he didn't come back to Georgia. Oh, really? Well, tell that to the actual 1993 sequel featuring Charlie Daniels, the devil comes back yeah. to Georgia. The devil moved back to Savannah so he could vote for Biden. Well, I saw that. I basically fell off my couch. I'm like, there's <laughs> Is Mark on the Late Show? Oh my God! Oh, Matt, you've been looking for a way to lift up Mark and Stephen Colbert in one uh, one event for so long. I'm I'm happy that your quest is at an end. Yes. Well, we're we're huge Mark and Maggie O'Connor fans. Thank you again for being with us this morning, and folks, please do tip them. Uh, and let's keep let's keep live music and live music uh, professional musicians just rocking and rolling here in the Queen City. Thank you again to both. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. We'll see you Mondays. Tune in We'll Mondays. see you Mondays. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Well, everybody, hey, it's Tim again. Um, I, I'll try to keep uh, at a better pitch this time. As Matt said, I'm co-founder of Charlotte is Creative and co-host of Creative Morning Charlotte. And, and one of our joys, what brings us back, what helps, what drives us to do this 65 months in a row with our team is the, the joy that we derive from introducing you to the people and the creatives in our community that are making Charlotte great, that make Charlotte creative. Um, and every month, it's our privilege with the uh, sponsorship and teamwork from Ortho Carolina and from The Savage Way to present a bolt of inspiration, a Moss Art Bolt created by The Savage Way to a Charlatan who inspires us whose work and passion in the community and in their own skill set, their drive to serve others really pushes us forward. And today it's, it's an honor, but also a sad duty to give a posthumous bolt of inspiration to a member of the Charlotte or the Creative Mornings family, Daryl Gaston. You may know him as the mayor of North End. I dare say that so many people on this call met him, loved him. He mentored you in the way that he mentored us. He spoke for us a few years ago on the topic of courage. And that is how this man lived his life. If you look at this picture of Daryl here with his hands up, just exuberant about life, loving everyone around him, taking care of everyone around him, being excited. That is the man that we lost two weeks ago. Daryl grew up in the Druid, Hids, Druid Hills neighborhood. He was a graduate of Independence High School. He went to the Hairstyling Institute of Charlotte and was an instructor there. He worked as a barber. He was a pastor. He was the longtime head of the Druid Hills Neighborhood Association. And he helped a few years ago found the North End Community Coalition. When he saw gentrification coming to his beloved neighborhood, he worked with developers. He worked with his community to make people aware of what was going on. He is, was a beautiful man. And to get a sense of what he's like, Steve, I'd like to roll a little clip of a song that he sung for all of us when he was our speaker at Creative Mornings. Find Daryl out in the community rolling up his sleeves to pitch in where needed, educating and helping to improve the residents and city which he loves. Ladies and gentlemen, here to speak to us on our global theme of courage, please welcome Charlotte's own Daryl Gaston, everybody. Daryl, come on out.
hey, look me over, lend me an ear. Fresh out of clover, mortgage up to here. But don't pass the plate, folks, don't pass the cup. I figure whenever you're down and out, the only way is up and I'll be up like a rosebud high on a vine. Don't thumb your nose, but take a tip from mine. I'm a little bit short of the elbow room, but let me get me some and look out, world, here I come. That was just a snippet of what an incredible person Daryl was. He greeted you with a hug. He was patient. He took time. He was a teacher. He was a friend. Uh, and I encourage all of you to, if you didn't know him, look him up. In a minute, when I can get back to the chat, I'll put a link to his speech in the chat, his talk for Creative Mornings. But I do want to leave you with a quote that, that he shared when, he, when Matt interviewed him uh, for The Biscuit a few months ago. And he said, please know, this is how he ended so many conversations. Please know that I matter, you matter, we matter. And it's important when we leave this time together that we help someone else know that they matter too. We are visible, we're vital, and we're valuable. And at this time in American history, if those words are not so important for us all to focus on in the lives of our community, I don't know what are. They will resonate through my life, and I hope that now that we've shared them with you, they resonate through yours. And now on to something a little bit more joyful. Uh, every month, it is also our pleasure to give out hug grants. As Daryl often would say, you know, or that, that I know he agreed with, was we have to support the things that we love that we can't just pay lip service, that we have to actually get behind and give our talents, our time, and our treasure to the things we think are important. So every month, with the help of our sponsors, T. Reed & Company, Google Fiber, and Nota Brewing, we are able to give out $250 micro grants to projects across Charlotte that we're excited about that are creative. So this month, we have three $250 hugs. The first is a visual art uh, uh, hug to Althea Buck. She is going to use her $250 to pay for a shooting location to create a series of uh, fine art portraits that are focused around dancers and the themes of earth, air, fire, and water. We're also giving one to Sarah Hahn, also in performing arts. She is doing a reimagining of Midsummer Night's Dream, and she's going to use her $250 towards costumes. And finally, Megan King got one, and she will use her $250 micro grant towards recording Epiphany Acapella's first studio EP. These are the kinds of things we love doing with hugs. We wanna remove, we can't finance an entire project, but we can make something possible. Together, you, us, our sponsors, we can remove one obstacle to a creative's dream so they can move forward. So many people that are on this call today have been able to be helped by a hug and by you. So with our sponsors, if you can give anything. If you can get $5, we will put it to the service of a creative so that what is in here ends up out here and we can all enjoy it and it builds our community. And to that end, we are also now able to give what we call bear hugs, which are thousand dollar hugs to previous hug grantees that have done an incredible job with their work. And this month, we are excited to say we're giving a bear hug to Meredith Dean and the Dean's List. She is going to use that hug later on this year to build a program that lifts up 20 Charlatans under the age of 20 who are doing incredible work. I know we've got 30 under 30, 40 under 40. Thanks to Charlotte Ledger, we have 40 over 40, finally. But so many young creatives, young entrepreneurs, and, and people who are starting their career here are not waiting to be anointed. They are jumping in right away and making a difference in Charlotte immediately. Meredith and my Dean's List recognizes that and they want all of us to know it. So we're excited to see what she does with that hug. All right, now we want you to meet some more exciting creatives. You know, one of the hardest things about COVID is we're not bumping into one another. We're not making new friends. You have to make an effort to get to know people. So on creative, uh, here at Creative Mornings, we like to speed date a few creatives and show 
Matt said 30 second videos. We have a few creatives that went a little over 30 seconds this time. But at any rate, I think everyone is going to be excited to see them. I encourage you to look these folks up. And in the chat, we are putting all their links. So the first one, oh, this is going to be awesome. Matt, I know you're excited about this. Right. Our speaker from a few months ago, the king, Carla Aaron Lopez, is working with the Mint Museum to put on an incredible exhibition of art that is for sale by artists of color, ranging everything from Black Lives Matter muralist artists to artists that you maybe haven't heard from yet, but you absolutely should. They are taking over an ex exhibition space in the Mint at the end of March. Let's roll tape and hear what the King has to say. What's up, Charlotte family? My good, good peoples, young Tim and young Matt have asked me to make an impromptu commercial for one of the dopest exhibitions coming to our town at the Mint Museum Randolph is called Local Street. Yes, 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 family. I am collaborating with over 40 local artists. The institution itself, the Mint Museum and Charlotte is Creative to pull off Charlotte's first large scale underground art exhibition. Yes, it's open to the public. Yes, nine times out of 10, your favorite artist is actually in it. And uh, if that's me, even better. But if it's everybody else, listen, there's so much love that can be shared. And what I need most from my Charlotte family is to pull up, show out, and support these local artists. Artists are more than just creative be beings. They are a part of our economic sustainability in the city. The prettier we make the city, the more people want to come to Charlotte and know about Charlotte. So my question is, where are you going to be March 26, 2021? Are you gonna be with me or are you gonna be locked up in the house? Hey, listen, <laughs> I think you should come and hang out with me and all my peoples for Local Street. Yes, it's going down the 26th, the 27th, and the 28th. And I would love for all of y'all to show up, say what's up, and check out all of the wonderful creatives we have right here in town. Peace. I mean, we love Carla. So yeah, she can have more than 30 seconds. That is no problem whatsoever. Listen, and this was a little yeah, surprised by the B-roll, but, but love it. It was, a, it was a mashup of Charlotte creativity. I, I also loved the, all the clips from, uh, from our good buddies at Charlotte Star Room, especially the ones with uh, Georgie Nakima. That is an awesome video they did. But yeah, Carla earns that time. I mean, this is cataclysmic. Doing this event at the Mint Museum is going to be awesome. So everybody needs to be there. Plus, who are we to the, deny the king? Please. Not, not me. Please. All right. Next up, Andrea Downs, one of our good friends with Airing Out the Dirty Laundry, has a brand new exhibition she's working on, and she wants you involved. Hey y'all, I'm Andrea Downs. I'm an artist and forever champion for women and femmes, stories, voices, and truth through airing out the dirty laundry, an ongoing community art movement where you can join your story with the others from home and from anywhere in the world. Message Received is a new participatory collection that is healing and powerful and unifying. We all have a story to tell. Be a part of this ever-growing narrative at aotdl.org where women's history is celebrated every day. Boom, 30 I'm, seconds, that's how you do it. I am, I'm wearing, I didn't even know this, but I'm wearing my, my uh, airing out the dirty laundry uh, t-shirt today. You just happened to have that shirt on? That wasn't, that's so totally random? No, no, I didn't know that we were gonna be playing an airing out, airing out the dirty laundry pitch video. So it's, a, it's sort of a nice, nice That's nice awesome. Thing. All right, next up is Van Gogh, a brand new music app created here in the Queen City. Roll it, Steve. Remember what it was like to experience live music? The singing, the dancing, the jamming. Last March changed how this looked. Venues were at jeopardy of closing down and musicians have lost roughly 75% of their income due to a lack of performances. But this is where Go Now steps in. We've created an app that allows you to now transform your space by bringing a musician to you on demand, providing you with endless opportunities for live music. Yeah, Chance, I love it. Chance is a great guy. I love I love this app that they're building, this business that they're building. We've we've been uh, staying in touch about it, and so I was really glad he had a chance to 
to do a 30 second pitch about it uh, today. Yeah, I think I have art history on the brain too. I think I said Van Gogh instead of go now, just because I love them both. So apologies <laughs> if, I, if I had a senior moment there. Um, next, we were really fortunate to work on an, an installation of giant eight foot wide postcards at 7th Street Station uptown outside the 7th Street Public Market, which is going on right now. And I wanna introduce you to two amazing artists that were part of it. They're gonna tell you a little bit about how they made their pieces. First is Ulysses Orellana, he goes by Yuli. And the second is Sana Nassar, who is an, uh, a new Charlotte resident who works in the 5,000 year old art form of henna. And they did amazing jobs. We're gonna see their videos right now. What's up guys, it's Yuli. Here's a quick video on how I put together my postcard design. So first I started with a digital rendition, which I projected onto the canvas uh, and then used a Sharpie to figure out my proportions and shapes. Then I laid tape out uh, wherever I didn't want spray paint and then filled that in, followed by some brushwork to fill in the rest of your colors and shading, and then finish it with a black, flat acrylic. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you later. Well, anytime we can get a peek at, at a Charlotte, Creative Charlotteans process, I'm, I'm in. That's well, here's on. the next one. Sana's video shows her process too. Hi, everyone. My name is Sana and I am a henna artist. And I had the amazing opportunity to be a part of this project and I had such a great time creating it. I started off by drawing out the background digitally. I was asked to focus mainly on henna art, therefore the majority of the work had very intricate detailing. I used acrylic paint and hand painted the arms and legs. Now henna is a huge part of South Asian culture as well as many other cultures and it is so so important to me. And I absolutely love that it's being appreciated by people all around Charlotte. The entire piece actually tells a love story. So if you guys get a chance, you should check it out. So, I mean, usually Sana works on hands and arms. We asked her to blow it up. That piece is four feet by four feet. And Yuli's is eight feet wide. So you can see them right now up until March 15th at 7th Street Station. I got one more video, Matt, if that's cool. I don't know if you've heard, there's a, there's a little thing going on. This, uh, it's a little, a TV show that's being, that's been shot and set in Charlotte. I, it's, it's uh, someone named Oprah Winfrey is, is, is involved. I, but I thought we'd throw them bone ring and maybe Doesn't show, show the trailer. So Steve, let's find out what this is about. What advice do you have for a young black lawyer? If you're doing it for the money, do it for the money. For me, it's all and only about the people. D, I know you. Leah Davis is a magnet for trouble. Promise you won't take her case. I'm putting quotes on case. You are so bad. Leah, you wanna tell me what's going on? I tried to do the right thing at work. Got myself into a mess of trouble. I need your help. D, we've made it 20 years without going up against each other in court. Let's not do it now. You and me are gonna pop that bottle. We won't talk about the case, and it'll be like old times. <laughs> they, they're watching me. Delilah, I'm gonna have the resources of the largest firm in Charlotte, and all you're gonna have is Leah Davis. I might have the truth. So how's the big case? It's getting bigger all the time. She wants things escalated. She wants a mess. D, I know that you're upset about what happened. Believe me, I am too. But we can't fall apart over this. All right, so I know we were we were kind of being silly about this, but this this is seismic, Matt. I mean, this is a show that's filmed in Charlotte, but, and we, but we all know that things have been filmed here. This is set in Charlotte. The Queen City is a star. It's a character on this show that was put together by Craig Wright and then Charles Randolph Wright, who is, is a Charlotte native. And I mean, it's, it, this is massive. It's also employed Charlotteans on either side of the camera. Our friends, Brian LaFontaine and Maria Howell are on it. And now for somebody who can give us a really interesting perspective from behind the camera is our own city council member at large, Braxton Winston, who, if you don't know, 
not only serves our city, but is actually a stagehand and a grip and a proud member of, of that community and is going to tell us about his experience on Delilah right now. I, I, thank you, guys. Thank you, uh, uh, Tim and, and, and Matt. And, and thank you to the entire uh, Creative Mornings uh, community. I'm grateful. This is probably my uh, uh, third or fourth time um, uh, being at Creative Mornings, but this is, I think, the first time I really get to talk to you um, from my creative capacity. Um, uh, as it was said, uh, Delilah is filmed in Charlotte, and we do believe uh, that this is the first uh, either a major series or major motion picture um, to actually be set in Charlotte. Um, and that was very intentional uh, by the executive producer, um, Charles Randolph Wright, who is from York, South Carolina, got his first job in show business actually down at Carowinds um, after they rejected him. Um, <laughs> once. Um, um, but this is, is special. This is um, hundreds of people um, from, from our Charlotte creative community um, um, being employed, um, whether it be behind the scenes or in front of the camera. Um, we're working right now. The, the, the show is still in post-production. Uh, so we're working to get as much Charlotte art um, involved in this as possible, um, as well as Charlotte artists, um, particularly Black female artists. I think you're going to hear uh, a lot of sounds that are familiar to this Creative Mornings um, uh, 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 community. Um, but we need this series to come back. There's a strong possibility that it's going to be there's going to be a season two, um, and we want this to be a, a multi-season event, um, not just for the workers, but this is huge for Charlotte. Um, you know, as we continue to grow. Um, uh, uh, we have to find more opportunities uh, to put roofs over people's heads um, and put food on folks' table. And so we have to be intentional um, uh, about, um, about cultivating um, the economic uh, development of our creative class. And I think this is one way um, that we can do it. Uh, there are a lot of people um, uh, that, that are working behind the scenes um, to do a lot of, uh, 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 bring a lot more exciting projects um, to the table. And, and there's, there's certainly, I think if you pay attention, uh, there's going to be a lot of exciting news um, to come. We're going to be doing a lot of, of stuff of engagement around uh, this series. Um, so we need everybody to watch. I saw in the chat, there were some folks from Seattle. Uh, make sure your friends and family uh, watch um, and really get to know Delilah. Uh, it's an amazing story of, of two um, Black female lawyers in Charlotte. Um, you're going to see uh, the neighborhoods uh, th that are familiar to you. Um, I'm just grateful. You can catch it on OWN, Oprah Winfrey Network, um, on Tuesday nights at 9. Uh, so uh, watch, enjoy, and share. And thank you, uh, Tim and, and uh, Matt, for, for giving me this time. Well, thanks for being here, Braxton. And one thing, too, that I think is really important for folks to know is that not only was he behind the camera, but Braxton advised a lot of the production. So he, he made sure that neighborhoods that don't often get love, even in our own city, were depicted on the show. And he's going to continue doing that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you, sir. So let's toss it over. Thank you again, Braxton. And let's toss it over now to Michelle Gabadia, who's going to introduce all of us to our speaker on the theme of Ripple this morning. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, Braxton. And thank you to everyone who contributed to that section. So our theme for this month is Ripple. Different than last month's theme of Divergent, Ripple is what you do that sparks or starts a flow of energy that affects other people or other things. And this morning, Tara Brown is going to give us all she knows about Ripple and the ripple effect that she probably has on most people and she doesn't even know about. If you don't know Tara Brown, she is a comedian and actually a family friendly and clean comedian, which she means she's good for everyone's soul. What you probably don't know Tara is I have aspirations to be a stand-up comedian myself. Oh, so just cool. watching you from afar has already started a ripple effect in my own oh, life. Oh, I love that. I so love this that. morning, I'm looking forward for you to share with us your thoughts on ripple and a little bit about yourself and why you're here today. Tara? Well, thank you, Michelle. I, first of all, I adore you. Every time I uh, log on to Creative Mornings, I was like, I wanna be her friend. So it's like, I wanna have like a post pandemic coffee with you once all of this is over. Uh, so yeah, exactly. So thank you so much for that warm introduction. Um, and thank you so much uh, to Matt and Tim for having me. If for no other reason you've given me the opportunity to put on some makeup and wear some earrings and wear some pants with a zipper and wax my chin hairs because I've not done any of that in like over a year. So I'm super grateful for that. Um, 
I am also trying to like be really cool and composed. Like, yes, I'm so happy to be here, but like on the inside, I'm like jumping up and down. Like I'm on creative fun in Charlotte. Um, you know, and I know I'm on the inside jumping up and down because I've not jumped up and down like in a very long time. So that's the inner me doing that. And uh, yeah, and I also got uh, recognized in Walmart yesterday. So I'm still on that high and then I have this. So like I'm pharmacy famous and I get to do Creative Morning Charlotte. Like, I don't even know what I'm gonna do with myself. Um, good morning to my creative community. I am so excited to be here with you this morning. And as Michelle mentioned, I am a stand-up comedian based here in Charlotte and I do. Uh, family-friendly comedy. Uh, I'm here in Charlotte by way of my beloved Brooklyn, New York. Shout out to those of you from New York. Um, and I'm a simple type of girl, really. Those who know me know that I really love four things. Um, Jesus, my family and friends, the New York Yankees, and Rocky movies. Like, those are the four things I love, right? Uh, Rocky Three is my favorite. We don't speak about Rocky Five. Um, <laughs> and another thing I get to do is I get to tell, bring joy to people by telling them jokes. And that is just such an incredible responsibility that I'm so um, privileged that I get to do. And a lot of people say to me, I think it's awesome that you're living your dream uh, to be a comedian. And I have to be honest with them. And I'm like, this was never my dream. You know, I, truth be told, one day I got bored and I Googled things to do in Charlotte <laughs> and comedy class popped up. And I thought, well, people think I'm pretty funny, so I might give it a go. Uh, so at the ripe young age of 45 years old, I started a comedy class. So Michelle, just pick it up. Look, you are not 45, so girl, you still got time to start. <laughs> um, so I started and um, the rest, seven years later, the rest, as they say, is history. If you're doing the math, that means I am in my 52nd year of life. Actually, my birthday is next Thursday. So I have um, been doing comedy since that time and I have just enjoyed it. So there is nothing greater than getting the opportunity to have an impact on someone um, by making them laugh. And one of my guiding philosophies of doing comedy is that, you know, everyone is going through something that you don't know what they're going through. Um, and if the time I spend with you, I can make you laugh for a little while and take your mind off your problems, I'm so happy to do that. And I learned a long time ago uh, what the power of just a smile can do for someone. Uh, years ago, I served at my church as a greeter, and we were serving at a funeral uh, for a woman who had unfortunately died tragically. And I remember a woman walking into the church, and she looked really sad, and understandably so. And her head was down. And when she looked up, my eyes met her eyes, and I smiled, and she smiled. And for that brief moment, you know, it took her mind off of her grief. And without words being spoken, I just wanted her to know, you know, I see you um, and it's going to be okay. And I think that's what, you know, a lot of us really want to do is to feel seen, you know, and so um, I love to do that. And performing comedy across the country has afforded me uh, many blessings and opportunities uh, to meet various people. Um, and I love when they come up to me and kind of tell me their stories. And there's honestly nothing more humbling when you get someone who comes up to you after a show who tells you that their father recently died. And this is the first time that they had gotten out of the house since that time. And the first time they laughed in a really long time. Um, and that's, that's pretty humbling. Or when someone just says to you, you know, they can connect with your material and say something you said resonated with, with you. Um, and they feel a connection to you because of that. I equally enjoy those people who come up to me after shows and give me tips on how to wax my chin hairs. That's always nice. Um, totally appreciate that. Um, if you have tips on waxing, tell me that. I don't like tweezers, <laughs> but I, I enjoy it all. So I, 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 <laughs> I love to get to do that. And I remember once performing uh, two separate occasions in a room where I really couldn't see anyone because the stage was lit so brightly. And I just remember hearing the unmistakable laugh of my mom 
And that great feeling of knowing I can make my mom laugh was really cool. And then I actually made a little kid laugh. And I don't know if you noticed, but kids are tough. <laughs> kids are brutally honest. And if you can make a kid laugh, that's saying something. So I remember just stopping the set and I was like, wait a minute, did I just make a baby laugh? And I did. And little Maisie at the time was probably about four years old. Um, and uh, so that was a great feeling. And uh, speaking of kids, I one time was performing at uh, Blumenthal's Open Mic, which I will encourage anyone in the Charlotte community. It is a wonderful, wonderful family-friendly event that is just, when they do that back in person, please uh, go. But I remember performing at that one year and um, a little six-year-old kid walked up to me and six-year-olds scare me. Cause again, kids brutally honest. And she walked up to me and she goes, you were funny. And I said, you thought so? And she goes, yeah, you were funny. So to recap, I'm killing it with kids and in the pharmacy. So if we're all keeping up, <laughs> that's what's going on there. Um, and speaking of kids, one of the things, as Michelle mentioned, I am a, a family friendly and clean comedian. So one of the joys that I absolutely love is the fact that I produ produce, excuse me, and host a clean comedy family show um, around town. I do a lot of the Comedy Zone uh, here in Charlotte. And I love um, creating a space where parents can enjoy the same humor that their kids can enjoy. And anytime I book a comedian to perform on that show, I tell them, your material, in your material, you can't have any profanity, vulgarity, or innuendo. Uh, so in short, if you can't tell your jokes to your mama or your pastor, you probably cannot say them at my show. <laughs> and um, the, the most awesome thing about the show is the reaction from the kids. Uh, I had a, a, one of my coworkers brought his daughter and she looked to be about eight years old. And she walked in and just looked like she'd rather be anywhere but there. Um, and so after the show, she comes up to me and she gives me this biggest hug. And she goes, that was amazing. And I said, did you have fun? She goes, I had so much fun. So when you can have that kind of effect on someone um, and you never know what it's going to do for them, you know, like they left that show and she could have went out and had an impact on someone else. So I do love that about comedy, the ripple effect that it does have that you can just be in a room with people, have a good time, and then just take that energy, enthusiasm, and joy uh, once you leave the building. Um, another thing I love about comedy so much is the universality of it. And I think like music, it's one of the uh, only art forms that brings people together, like all types of people. And you know, it reminds me, once I was at the Spectrum Center here and I went to a, uh, Earth, Wind and Fire concert, oh, a few years back. Amazing. Earth, Wind and Fire gives the best concerts. And at one point I was looking around uh, the arena and I was watching different people from different ethnic backgrounds and age ranges. We were all just having a really good time and what united us was our love of this music. So I was singing to the top of my lungs really badly. And a guy next to me goes, you sing really well. I said, no, sir, I don't. I'm just having a really good time. <laughs> and so, and I also said to him, I said, and I just need to let you know, when Philip Bailey starts singing Reasons, I'm going to hit you on your arm a lot and I'm going to lose my natural mind. <laughs> and I did, and it was fun. So I, I love that. And I think comedy does the same thing, right? You come to a show, you have a good time, you remember the jokes, you leave the place, you tell somebody about the joke you heard, and you, um, you know, you, you just have that in, in enthusiasm, excuse me. Um, one of my favorite commercials is the Liberty Mutual commercial that says pay it forward. And I know you all remember this. It's the commercial where a person does a kind act for someone and then someone from a distance see, sees that person do that kind act, and then it forces them to do a kind act for someone else. I adore that commercial because that's just what life should be. We should all be looking out for each other and just, you know, doing those things. And you never know who's watching. Um, and that's the thing that really gets me. It's kind of like when you go 
you know, through the Starbucks drive through and like someone just like you get to the window and they're like, oh, the car in front of you just paid for your coffee. And you're like, oh, that was nice. I should probably do the same. But that always usually catches me the day before payday. So I was like, not today. I'm going to come back tomorrow and I'll get like two cars. I'll get two cars, I promise. But, <laughs> but it's infectious when people do uh, kind things for you like that. Um, it just, it makes you, it, it gives you joy. Um, when I lived in New York, um, I used to work with a woman an older uh, lady by the name of Frida Slappy. Is that not the best name, by the way? Frida Slappy. And um, we used to uh, walk out together and go to the subway. And she would always say, Tara, I need to make sure I have change in case we see a homeless person. And it was just such a very simple statement, but it really um, meant a lot to me that she would do that. And that happened back in the 80s, but I still remember that. And because of Miss Frida Slappy, I still keep like a couple of dollars in my wallet because you just never know. So I never forgot that. Um, and here's the thing, maybe you don't have the ability to create and perform a joke, um, but you can have an, a ripple effect in other ways. Uh, I have a friend uh, by the name of Gail Jarrett, who is quite possibly one of the kindest and most considerate people I know. Uh, and because she's so kind and considerate, I know she's watching. Hi, Gail. Um, but Gail is the type of person who remembers everyone's birthday. And not only does she remember, she sends them a card. She sends me a Valentine's card every year and she even gives me a gift, which is so wonderful. Um, it does remind me though, that every time she sends me that, that I don't have a Valentine that year, but it, that's beside the point. Um, but she's been my most consistent Valentine. Uh, she used to make me Easter baskets, but that got weird after a while, so I think she stopped. <laughs> but what I love about Gail is her heart, and she has a heart for people, and the way that she shows people kindness and love is so infectious, it makes you want to show people kindness and love to other people. Um, and I will say this, kind of side note, if someone takes the time to mail you a card, that person really likes you. Because if you think about what goes into mailing a card, right? You have to go to the store to buy it. You have to go buy a stamp. I don't even know what stamps cost. I don't even know the last time I bought a stamp. <laughs> you know, you have to go buy a stamp. You have to use your stamp. Because, you know, when you get stamps, it's like precious cargo. Like, you don't want to give it up. And then you have to mail it. <laughs> so for someone to take that kind of time to do that is, is phenomenal. I myself don't send cards and I actually got kicked off my mother's Christmas card list um, because my mother takes Christmas cards very seriously. And one year she sent me a card and I didn't send her one back. Um, so I got off the list. So you just have to know who you are. So I'm not a card person, but I appreciate people who are. And here's the thing. Um, it's someone, uh, I'm sorry, I lost my place y'all. Um, so how do you show up for people? Um, sometimes it's just being there, you know? I used to have a friend who was a fantastic listener. I admire that trait in someone because I am not a great listener. Um, and it's not that I am not concerned with what you're saying. I'm too busy in my head trying to figure out how to solve your problem as opposed to taking the time to listen. So I had a friend um, who one time I was telling her problem and I went on and off for like 20 minutes and she never interrupted and she listened. And then finally I stopped, I'm like, how do you do that? Like, I don't even understand how you do that. Um, but when someone takes the time to hear you and be intentional about being concerned about you, that's another way um, that you can show love to someone. And again, because I remember that she did that, it had a ripple effect on me and it made me want to be more intentional about how I listen to people. I have to say, I'm still working on it. <laughs> I'm not quite there, uh, but you get the point. Uh, and you know, showing someone support doesn't always have to cost you time or money. It could be the simple things like, you know, do you share when your friend, your artist friends are having shows? Uh, do you share their information on social media? Because here's the thing, you never know who in your friend group may need to know about a comedy show or, you know, they want to go hear some spoken word 
or hear music or go look at a beautiful piece of art. You don't know the impact that that may have on them. So sometimes it's just simple. It's about simply sharing uh, your friend's information. Um, and this probably seems like a good time uh, to stop and say, uh, please follow me on social media at Tara Brown Comedy or sign up for my newsletter at TaraBrownComedy.com. That's a cheap plug, I know, but I wouldn't be a comedian, people, if I didn't do it. Um, and I've heard it said uh, once that in a world where you can be anything, be kind. And I would also like to add to that, be courteous, be respectful, be loving, be thankful, be generous, be gracious, be supportive, be intentional, and always be impactful as you never know what ripple effect you will have on someone else. So in closing, I'd like to again, thank Matt and Tim and the team for having me today. And I am so happy to be a part of this wonderful community of creatives. And I'm grateful to the many people in this community who have nurtured and supported my creativity over the years. I'd especially like to thank uh, my family is at the Comedy Zone, Blumenthal Performing Arts, uh, Queen City Comedy, Diversity On and Off Stage, uh, The Evening Muse, Summit Comedy, and my wonderful friend Lauren Ansley and Lauren Ansley Comedy Productions for the opportunities they have uh, each afforded me over the years. So thank you, everyone, and thank you again so much for having me. Now go out there and just be, be impactful and have a ripple effect on people. Oh, Tara, thank you so much. We love you. I you're, love you back. <laughs> you're so, you're just so amazing. And that, those words were really inspiring. You know, thank like that's, you. those are so the messages we need to hear these mornings. Well, I'm to glad to hear that. To go out there and show up as our, as our best selves. Yes. You know? um, and, and you make love and laughter just, just sort of ripple through our community and, and beyond. And so for that, we're super, super grateful. Thank you. Do you have anything coming up that you want us to know about? Any sort of show coming up or anything? Um, yes. Well, I'm going to be doing something really fun um, with Blumenthal Performing Arts called Nerdy Nights In, uh, Ladies Who uh, Rock History. So there are a, a great uh, group of us women, and we're going to be telling stories of some amazing women in history who you may not know about. Uh, so the date on that is March 24th. Uh, it's free. You can register at Blumenthal's page, and um, it's going to be a lot of fun. We did it back in November for Ladies Who Rock the Vote, and so we're doing it with history. And I, I can guarantee you, there are some women you you will you have not heard about, and you're going to be fascinated by the story. So I hope that you all will tune in for that. That's so great that you're a part of that, and we've loved. We've been sort of in a creative consultant role with the Blumenthal on developing the whole what used to be Nerdy Night Out, and now it's right. Nerdy Night and someday it'll be Nerdy Night Out again. But the fact that you're a part of that just makes all the sense in the world. It's so so brilliant. So thank you again so much for being with us and sharing part of your story with us. This thank morning. you, Matt, for having me. And again, as I told you when you sent me the email to invite me, I was like, what? Like I was so excited. So. Thank you. I had a similar really reaction cool. when you replied back and said yes. <laughs> <laughs> the love is mutual. Thank you. Folks, in a moment, we're going to end things this morning by playing a very short video, something beautiful that's going to send you back into your life with a surge of power and inspiration. So please hang in there for just a few more minutes. First, though, I want to thank you once, thank once more Harvey Cummings and Michelle Gabadia, Kerma Moraine, Charlotte City Council member Braxton Winston, the Savage Way, Ortho Carolina for our Bolt uh, of Inspiration segment our musical guests, Mark and Maggie O'Connor, and of course, Tara Brown. Thank you also to our Creative Mornings volunteer team, all of our sponsors who champion creativity in the Queen City and keep us going. And many thanks to each and every one of you for being with us this morning. And now we are thrilled to share a very short video with you created by our friends at Charlotte Star Room last June when our nonprofit Charlotte is Creative and the city of Charlotte initiated the Black Lives Matter mural project in Uptown Charlotte Charlotte Star Room stepped up immediately to donate their services in documenting this historic creative event. And this two minute video featuring a spoken word voiceover by Greg Jackson of Heal Charlotte was one of the results of that generosity. We are ending this morning with this video basically as an excuse to say that you have until March 13th to check out the Lift Every Voice exhibit at the Harvey Begant Center for African-American Arts and Culture, 
Lift Every Voice is an evolving installation that looks at the nature of public art and social activism. And Charlotte's internationally celebrated Black Lives Matter mural is at the very center of it. So please head to the Gantt Center and see it for yourself. Daybreak Legends, until we see you again next month, keep the masks on, keep the faith strong, and it is our pleasure to leave you with this. Steve. Legacy. Are you willing to attach yourself to a legacy that's bigger than yours? Is it all about you? Is it self-preservation or is it about your brothers and sisters? What do you live for and what is your legacy? What are they going to say about you when you're gone? Does it matter 10 years down the line, 20 years down the line? Or do you just want to be remembered as a t-shirt? Have you attached yourself to a legacy? Do you have enough relationships in this world that people are going to remember you for your morals, your values, or are they going to remember you for your last tweet? Does your name stand forever? Do you have integrity? Do you have passion? Do you have purpose? Do you have legacy? Are you trying to be healed? Are you trying to heal others or is it about self-preservation? Because if it's about that, then we're not gonna make any positive change. I need us to move forward, but do you know where we was at? And I need you to make a choice. You either gonna build or destroy. Don't watch me not breathing. Stop the camera and get involved. I need you to get the action. I need you to do something. The protest is not about today. The protest is 365 days a year. Are you ready to do something bigger than you? Do you have integrity? Will you do the right thing when nobody is looking? Do you have passion? Are you fired up about something and you don't know where to place it? Have you walked into your purpose yet? And are you willing, are you willing to attach yourself to a legacy that's bigger than you? Matt, for those who are asking about how to see that video again, I've put the link to it and Greg Jackson's lyrics in the chat. I think that um, I think that in many ways that video captures the theme of Ripple. You know, it's about legacy. It's about how you're impacting the, the community around you and the people around you. Tara spoke about that today. Everyone that spoke and performed today sort of embodies that that spirit. And I just love how that video and that work of those artists on that piece in Uptown Charlotte captures the spirit of Ripple. You know, so I'm just glad we got to end with that. And uh, we are, in, we love you all. We love and fall deeper in love with Charlotte every month. We cannot wait to see you next month. Harvey's gonna take us out. Yes. Yeah.